Thank you, Zoom. Um, hey, hey, everybody. Well, this is so fun. I don't even, I think this is like the first time, Brianna, I've been on your, like your team call. Um, so it's so fun and it means a lot because um, my team is pretty deep and Brianna is like way down there. And um, it's exciting because that means that over the years we've duplicated and we've developed new leaders way down the line. And that's really the ultimate, that's the ultimate goal is when your team is duplicating and developing and growing leaders and all of that. So I don't take it for granted at all to be on here tonight. And I also um, don't think that Brianna is less than on my team because she's like a level 10. Um, because the truth is, is our compensation plan has this thing called compression. And at any point in this career um, that somebody quits in her upline, she will continue to compress to me. Um, so it's like insurance and our compensation plan. And it's a huge deal. It's a big blessing. And it's something that Plexus is very unique um, in our compensation for. So it's also super exciting. I also know, so these are just the things I'm saying be before I kind of get started because um, Brianna is like, is, is even people that aren't on my team or people that are on my lower levels, it all matters because they are motivating their, their success motivates my people. And I believe that fire burns from the bottom up. And so when Brianna's team's on fire, it motivates everyone in my whole upline. And so it's a big deal. So anyways, I'm super excited to be on here tonight. Um, we just had friends come in from Ohio. We've been doing a lot of entertaining this summer. And so I have been scheduling Zooms in the um, nooks and crannies of entertaining people. I'm actually cooking dinner and they're all out in my pool. So um, I'm like, give me 30 minutes. I got to go do a call. So, I, but I love that. Like, I don't feel like that, that that's something that I most appreciate about what we have in Plexus is, is the freedom. I mean, next week, uh, Tim and I are headed to Florida to maybe look at buying a condo. And it's like, this has given me not only the financial freedom to be able to do something like that, but it's a freedom that I can take off and I can be messaging people on the road. I can have a zoom on the go. Um, it's just a big blessing. So, okay. So for people that do not know me, I think maybe all of you have heard my story. I'm just going to share a little bit about myself. Um, I worked in the retail world for 10 years, 10 plus years, had all of my babies working full time, went through, you know, having working 40, 50 hours a week, having all of my kids. So I know what it's like to grind and to work. And I know what it's like to um, put your kids in daycare and work full time and feel disconnected from your kids. Like I'm very familiar with that. Um, and about 10 years into that whole thing, um, I was telling my husband, I'm like, I feel disconnected from my kids. I feel like they're being raised and I feel like I am here, but I'm not connected with them because I'm gone so much. And it became very emotional because they were getting bigger. It's one thing to do that when they're little, but once they start getting bigger and they're in sports and things get real emotional with like teenage years, things got real different for me. Like I didn't want to miss those moments anymore. Like uh, my pediatrician told me when the kids were little, she's like, work hard now because when they get older, that's when you need to be in present with them, you know, their teenage years. And I can honestly say having now been a stay at home mom for seven and a half years or eight or actually longer than that, but um, Tim and I both being a stay at home parents, I can honestly say that that has been the biggest blessing to be here with our kids through their teenage years um, and to be present and to travel and to, to be with them. But anyways, I had my babies and about 10 years into working full time, I really felt like God was calling me to be at home. And so I um, quit my job. I was making almost six figures at the time. So this is a huge leap of faith. Um, my husband took on two jobs. I just did what it took to get by. And it was a season of life where I really felt like God prepared me and gave me enough pain to want to change. Um, I really feel like a lot of people never get to that point where they're in so much pain a pain of, you know, like, what is it saying? Pain of staying the same is, is bigger than the pain of change. And I felt like that season of life where we were broke, but I was a stay at home mom gave me the pain that I saw. And it put me in a place where I was willing to do what it was going to take to have freedom. 
And a lot of people haven't gotten to that pain point yet. And if you haven't gotten to that pain point, it's really hard to overcome a lot of challenges if you haven't gotten to that pain point. And sometimes that pain point has to be created. Um, sometimes that pain point, you're just complacent. Maybe you're living in pain, but you've, you've really just allowed yourself to believe that that's the way you have to live the rest of your life. Um, but I was, I didn't believe that. Like I was going through that season. I really wanted better for my family and my kids. And right before I was presented with Plexus, um, my kids wanted to play baseball and it was going to be $350. And I did not know where that $350 was going to come from. And they couldn't play baseball. We had to tell our kids no. And, um, that broke me. Like that was like the breaking point. I was introduced to Plexus and my friend, um, was able to get off of medications, lose weight and replace a full-time income in three months. And that got my attention. Um, I did not join for the health products. I can honestly say um, I did not join for gut health. I did not join to get healthy on to me. I was a pretty healthy person, um, but I joined for the financial opportunity. And a lot of people are like so scared to just talk about the money and talk about the financial opportunity. But for me, that was what my pain point was. That was the need for me. I, I was shown the opportunity of what you could do. And every, and I, I knew the stories. I knew what these products had done for my friend. Um, so I didn't have to question that for myself. I just knew I needed to find people that were looking that, that were ready for a life change. I really believe you cannot sell a life change. I believe people have to be ready for it. They have to be committed to it. And so our jobs as Plexus Ambassador is to find people who are ready and open their eyes. Some people are ready, but they don't know what is possible. And so even people that join Plexus, join your team, and they're with these products, you have to show them the possibilities. You have to show them the money. You have to show them the community. You have to open their eyes. And I'm going to talk about a few of my big tips for duplication at the end, um, because I do believe that before, before ever reading a network marketing book, I believe that there were some natural things that came um, came naturally for me that, that created a lot of momentum and success. And so I'm going to just share the things that I did before I even knew that that was really a key part to network marketing. Um, but, you know, I joined Plexus and I, I was, I, I joined and I'm an all or nothing person. And um, my husband told me I had to make $50 a month. And so that was my goal, 50 bucks. <laughs> so you guys like that was, but I didn't have a ton of belief. Um, but um, I thought that it was going to be super hard to do that. So I created an action plan for myself. I created an IPA sheet before there were IPA sheets. You know, this is like old school. This is like eight and a half years ago. They didn't have IPA sheets. I, I created like, I'm going to reach out to this many people every day. I'm going to post on social media this many times a week. And um, I was living in an area where I didn't know anyone. And I only had a hundred and something Facebook friends. Um, and I'm an introvert by nature and I'm afraid of everything, including small dogs. And so I did not look like on the outside, what you would say is like a future rock star, but I had a lot of pain in my life where I was financially super stressed and I wanted something better for my family. And I am a very routine person. And so, you know, they say one of the hardest things in network marketing is consistency. Um, for me, that was kind of easy because I'm super routine. So like, if I say I'm going to do this, I would get like anxiety if I didn't complete it before I went to bed. Um, and so if I promise something to myself, I want to keep it. I want to keep that promise. Um, now, sometimes over the years, has that been something I've had to revisit and be like, okay, I need to change my routine. And I'm very big on, you better make your routine something that you can actually accomplish. I get so many people that, that get like, I'm going to reach out to 20 people a day and I'm going to do all this. And then they do it one day and they're like, screw that. I can't do this. I'm like, listen, let's make it more like, okay, if you can't like, don't set your goal for that because you're going to, you're going to, you're going to fail because that's not practical to work a full-time job and do something consistently. You better create your game plan after something you can actually stick to because that sticking to is what's going to create momentum and success in your business. I promise you, I promise you, I don't care what personality you are, how many Facebook friends you have, like, I don't care what your story is. If you get consistent with reaching out, posting on Facebook, adding people to events, like doing these things I'm going to tell you to do, you will create momentum in your business. It's a promise. Like I, I'm telling you, there's, there's no way you can't not see growth if you're willing to do show up consistently. And people ask me all the time, 
So how do you get yourself to show up every, every day? Well, we created, a, um, my husband and I, when he quit his full-time job and Plexus became what we were doing to make money, this is our, this is, we, we treat this like a business. Um, I've always treated it like a business. I believe if you want to make, if you get, if you want to make, get to the point and you guys can go in your chat and I'm just throwing this out there. I mean, Brianna, I'm just like, literally, this is what I felt. I'm just going, but if you, um, if you want to put in your chat and you want to tell me like what your goals are, like, what, you know, do you want to rank advance? Are you just looking to get healthy? Whatever it is. Um, tell me what your goals are. And, and I just believe that you have to think if I'm wanting to make a six figure income, you better be willing to put the work in to make a six figure income. Um, I wanted to, I wanted financial freedom and I was willing to do what it took. And sometimes that meant I had, well, I, actually it meant a lot of times, um, well, I'm just going to go through I, what I feel like my keys are for, cause I can't be anybody else. Everybody does this business. Um, oh, Andrea, I love you. Uh, diamond and beyond diamond. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I want and need financial freedom. So to the top, yes. Going to the top and back again. Yeah. Um, listen, there's nothing that can stop you. If you have personal belief that that's where your, I mean, where your belief is, is where your energy is going to go. If you believe that you're going to reach a next level, then you better create the energy and the activity around reaching that next level. Um, I loved at our convention this year, we had a couple of diamonds that I had never, um, I had never heard from before. I never heard their stories. And it was like, so inspiring to me. And this lady got up there and she goes, she said, you know, one thing she said, it's kind of offended me over the years because she goes, I, she goes, it's, it's offended me and it's actually inspired me. And she's like, I feel like it's amazing. She said, but people come up to me all the time and say like, if you can do it, I can do it. And it's like kind of a joke because she's just like your average like country girl. And um, she said, but I'm going to tell you the reasons why you might not be able to do it. You might not be able to do it. And it like, when she spoke this, I thought, this is good. She said, you know, a lot of people are not willing to count the cost. They're not willing to put in the work. They're not willing to put in the effort to have true financial freedom. You guys, the average diamond ambassador is making $30,000 a month. You know, Tim, my husband and I don't have a college degree. Where else are we going to go? What are we going to do to make $30,000 a month with time freedom? I mean, time freedom is to me, the ultimate freedom. Being able to get up and decide what you're doing today is the ultimate freedom. I mean, we can have all kinds of things, but I just want to be able to pay my bills, save for the future, take care of our kids and be able to lay by the pool if I want to, or be able to, you know, go out and have lunch with my friends or go up and visit my family when they're in need, be there for people when they're in need, because I have time freedom. Like there's no value you can put on that. Um, that's the ultimate freedom, I believe. Okay. So here's just some of my tips that I'll just throw at you um, before we are finished for this call. Um, I believe that one thing that created um, a ton of a ton of success for me was being self-aware, um, knowing if I woke up and I didn't feel like doing something, um, knowing if there was a block. You know, we all know. Like, listen, we are overeducated, overtrained. We have we have so much given to us that we're, we're like, I, I used to teach all the time that we're like gluttons of personal growth. Like we have so, we're like, we're walking around and we're so full of knowledge and we're so full of training, but we aren't doing anything with it. And I just think that like, if you were to wake up, I'm a big advocate of like, creating your own game plan, your own, um, like knowing where you are, if it's going to be, it's up to me. If you have that, if you have that minute, if it's, if it's meant to be, it's up to me. If it's going to be, it's up to me. There is nobody, including your team and your upline that can do this for you. There's nobody, your team cannot do this for you. Your upline cannot do this for you. If it is going to be, it is a hundred percent on your shoulders to create momentum and success and believe in it 100%. And one of the biggest keys to doing that is becoming super self-aware. If you are struggling with something in your life, um, if you're struggling with belief, if you're struggling with where, whatever your struggle is, um, becoming aware of that and actually doing what it takes to get over it. If you are comfortable, be, become self-aware you're comfortable. If you're not doing anything that scares you, become self-aware you're not doing anything that scares you. If you are giving yourself outs and excuses and reasons why things are happening, if you're blaming other people, really become self-aware if you're blaming other people. If you're blaming your team, if you're blaming 
the company. I mean, I've seen it all. Like, you know, if you're blaming the products, um, you better become self-aware that, that you're doing that. And listen, we all, if you become self-aware, you understand it's a normal process. We all go through moments where we have like issues. Um, if you become super self-aware that you're jealous of other people that you feel like that you feel like you should be where somebody else is or isn't and or if you're afraid of success um, become self-aware and when you do that then every day you're tackling you're tackling that you're tackling that you are moving yourself forward you are not um, if you're not growing your um, I, I feel like, you know, we've said over the years that our, our, your biggest test for perfection is just growth. If you're growing, you're becoming a perfect person. You're becoming a perfect leader, a perfect ambassador. Um, growth is the best test of, of um, success. And so you may not be where you want to be, but if you're growing, you are highly successful. And so I want you guys to focus on becoming self-aware and, and don't let yourself be out. If you're telling yourself you're so busy, that is an excuse. Um, there is somebody with less doing more. Um, there is somebody that has less given to them and they're doing more going farther beyond you. Um, there is people that are, have way less, uh, you know, time. Um, I, and listen, I have all the time in the world. Sometimes that works against me. I love busy people. The people that are the busiest, um, can get the most crap done because they've been used to like doing a lot in such a short period of time no excuses um get over yourself and create your goals and create the activity around your goals and make it happen so step thing thing number one that i feel like was a big tip for me is that um being self-aware second thing um and, and you know being self-aware too i'll just say this is also recognizing hey i need to i need to talk there's been so many moments where i'm just like call up sonia call up my upline this is where i'm at and then she'll turn around and say something that offends me because it's like, you know, well, it sounds like you have a problem. That's what she always tells me. It sounds like you have a problem. And I would be like, you're so annoying. I'd be like, literally, you're so annoying. Um, and so, but it totally like got me out of it. It's like, yeah, this is my problem. This is my problem. I can, I can figure this out. And so anyways, okay. My second thing that I feel like was a big key to success is tap rooting tap rooting. I mean, if I didn't tap root, I mean, Andrea, Derek, I mean, we've been close and she's like my level seven. Um, Brianna, I mean, I know Brianna and she's my level, I don't even know, 10 or nine, or I don't even know what level she is. Um, tap rooting has been the biggest key to success from the very beginning of my Plexus journey. I have messaged every person that joined my team in all seven levels. Um, every person gets a private message from me or gets a text message from me and they get introduced to me. They talk, we talk about their goals. If they're willing to play ball with me or if they're willing to chat with me, we talk about their goals. I talk about opportunity. The reason why this is so huge is because sometimes Sometimes that third party validation, maybe they joined and they never saw any anybody else besides who they joined under. It is so huge to make people believe that they're a part of something bigger. They have got to see something bigger. They have to see some potential. They have to be spoken to in a way that like they could do this or there is opportunity here. So tap rooting, um, finding out people's goals that, that you don't know. They're strangers. I'm like, I'm, I just reach out to them and I just say, listen, um, you know, hi, I'm Michelle, you know, I'm in your upline in Plexus. I just want, you know, I tell them a little bit about myself and I just, you know, I'd love to hear your goals. I'd love to be a secondary support. You you join an amazing leader. I would love to have, um, be able to have support you in any kind of a way that act alone has helped me create leaders on my levels three four five six seven that their uplines haven't done anything i have a ton of what you would call check collectors and i'm not offended by them because they brought in that person that i may not have known um, i'm not offended that people are collecting checks because that's what network marketing is it's about not who i know if it was about who i knew i only had 100 facebook friends um, if it's network marketing is not about who you know it's about who they know and so the tap rooting is all about they it's all about projecting what you want on other people and this goals and visions and keep it like big picture and people have to have belief and raising people up and showing them the way and so i'm a big fan of tap reading. and there's you know strategic things that you could talk to around tap reading, but um i look at everyone in my download as like downline as like potential and some people you know because of that messaging them and because of that tap reading you know they'll reach out to me and be like i don't think my uplines do anything but i really want this I, i'm seeing it and it'll it gives me that opportunity whereas i would if i would have never reached out to them at the beginning they wouldn't 
they maybe go to another company because they would have never seen that bigger vision and their upline quit or whatever. And so that gave them an opportunity to come back to me and us work together and kind of link arms and do something together. Um, okay. So my third tip for you is kind of with taprooting, but um, third party validation. Um, I believe, and, and I'll just do third party validation and events. They kind of go hand in hand. The reason why, listen, I think that most people are on this team, y'all have blown my minds with how much recruiting you can do, how much recruiting, how much success that you've had. You guys got it together. You're better recruiters than I am. I'm just saying like this team is rock solid in recruiting, but if they're just being recruited and they've never been exposed to a third party validation, they've never been exposed to an event, they've never been exposed to testimonies, they've never been exposed to something bigger, your chances of keeping them are way less, they're like way down. You have got to throw it out there. You've got to expose them to as much as possible to make them feel like they are a part of a, like this community. They have to make sure that they are, they feel like they're a part. And because listen, I didn't join for gut health, but I knew lots of people that needed gut health. I needed to be exposed to testimonies. I needed to be exposed. I didn't live in a small town, but some of the people that were joining me lived in a small town and they felt like they, they couldn't be successful. So I had to connect them to somebody that lived in a small town and was having success. I, I needed to open their eyes and make sure that there was nothing that was keeping them from be, feeling confident to join my team, but not just join my team, but even after they're a part of it, keep dripping all that. Events are so big for belief. I can 100, and I think 2020 has really been amazing for us, but it's also like hurt our vision a little bit. Like I went to the top of Plexus doing in-person events. Now I did Facebook, I did all of the things, but face to face where I can, there's something about belief and events that cause people to catch the vision. Okay. So I have like a girl, Lisa Hall underneath me. She's going to go working towards Sapphire this month. Um, she joined from an event and came up to us in person and said, can I make this much money a month? And we showed her a paycheck. She has rocked and rolled with this thing ever since. What if we wouldn't have had that, you know, what if like she wouldn't have been pushed to come to that event? I really feel like you guys, people are vac vacationing, people are out there. It's time to get back to doing in-person events, not being fearful, um, doing sip and seize, doing, um, you know, anything that you can do to just get people like around, you know, um, be creative. There's no rules around that. And I'll just say here at the end, I know that you guys, there's, there's amazing leaders in this company. There is a lot of leaders and there's a lot of people that have had different success because of different reasons. You know, like Instagram is a big one right now. People are recruiting, you know, 30 to 60 level ones a month on Instagram, you know, have all this influence going after influencers. Um, that wasn't my story. That wasn't my journey. I had to fight my way to the top of this company. And so what I believe is that anybody can do it if they are hungry enough. I, I like, I just believe it with all of my heart and anybody can do this if they're hungry enough. You have to get your hunger to a level that you're willing to put in the effort. And if you do that, like there's literally nothing that can stop you. There's nothing, if you're struggling with your leadership, then you're going to, where's my book? Oh, it's over by my bedside. If you're struggling with leadership, you're gonna pull out John Maxwell and you're gonna read the books until you figure it out. If you're struggling with a certain, like, I don't know how to tap root. Okay, well then throw together a training for your team. You know, the best way to learn something is to teach on it. Um, if you're struggling with anything in network marketing, I like, like literally I would, I would tell people like, like if I'm struggling with something, I'll throw together a training. And you know what that does for me? makes me have to dig and learn and grow. And then I'll train on it. And they're like, oh my gosh, like that's, that, you're so amazing at this. And all like to be an expert, you just have to know something like 5% more than someone else to be an expert. If you are struggling with anything in this business, start teaching your team about it. Start learning about it, start growing and start stopping the excuses to say that this, like, I can't do what someone else does because that someone else maybe learned it five minutes ago before they jumped on a Zoom and they sound like a freaking expert because they literally read an article. I mean, that's, that's where we're at. You know what I mean? Like we're, we're so overeducated. We have so much like available to us. We just need to grab it and go grab it and grow. I mean, whatever it takes, like just make it happen for yourself because I am seeing like somebody is going to do it. Like why, why not you? Like someone's going to do it with less than you have. And it's for you. And this team is, will be a diamond team soon. Like, and 
I'm like so excited for it. Andrea, Derek's on here, Brianna, I mean, both of you guys are headed to the top and you guys have a lot of people growing and going to be at the top with you. Um, but what I do know is that if you do not take your success personally, then it can grow and fall as quick as it, it as quick as it grows. And I never want to see that for people. I want you to grow with grit and grind and understanding of what this takes and long-term vision and love and passion and energy and happiness and peace. And um, I, you know, one last thing I'll kind of give to you because I said I'd make this 30 minutes is one last thing. I believe that you can, like one of my biggest keys in life is to want for more, have huge aspirations, have huge goals, but have peace in my life. Okay. Sometimes people feel like this franticness that they want all this stuff and then they feel chaotic. Okay. The, the opposite to me of peace is chaos. Um, I don't like having chaos in my life. I actually, Tim says, I like having chaos in my life. I just think it's like my energy is kind of chaotic. And so, and I've always had organized chaos, you know, I'm just like, I know where everything's at, but it's, kind of chaotic. Um, but I have to have personal peace in my life um, and not feel chaotic. And I believe that it's just like, I'll just put it into terms that us moms can understand. It's just like, what does it feel like when it's dinner time and you have no plan? What's it feel like? It's, uh, and it's so frustrating and you're just like, everybody's hungry. And it's just like, I don't know what to do. And like, we didn't plan. Um, but what's the opposite whenever you've meal prepped for the week, you have a plan and it's just like, it feels so peaceful. It's like, you have a plan. It's peaceful. At the end of the day, people still get fed. So, you know, you, you, you feed your kids no matter what, but was there either chaos or was there peace? And I believe as a Plexus ambassador, we can live our lives with such peace with a plan. And so you guys have an amazing system and upline leaders, grab a hold of what they've given you as a plan. And if you have to tweak it because we're all our own CEOs of our own business, if you have to tweak it a little bit to make it you personally, tweak it a little bit. I'm up, to, that's good. Nobody has, should have egos that you can't tweak your system a little bit, tweak the system, make it work for you. But at the end of the day, come up with a plan that's going to create consistency and success for you and your life. And it's also going to create peace. And at the end of the day, that's my goal is to grow and thrive and be at peace. So that's all I have for you, Brianna. All you have, I mean, <laughs> I feel like that was like just perfect. And like you put it all out there and I love that you are like, just so like real and vulnerable. And so it's just like, true raw knowledge that you like always give us, but I see Andrea popping on. Do you have something to say? <laughs> no, I was just saying so much. That was amazing. Thanks, so guys. Your, you're like, your team is awesome. Like, I don't feel like, you know, sometimes as a leader, you feel like you don't have anything more to give, but the only thing that I can give is my own experience and our own stories. And I think that, you know, going back to how you guys all are, your, your own leaders, you know, focus on what, focus on your own personal stories and you will always inspire people. You will always get to the next level. So I'm super excited for this team. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This was amazing. Love you. Love you.